Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Humanity Chats. My name is Margie March. I am your host. Um, we have a special edition today. If you're here, share this link with your friends. Share it with your network. We are going to be talking everything mothering. We are so blessed to have five amazing women from across the United States joining us. We have Dr. Sabrina Jackson coming from Detroit. We have Abba Kato Ander from Florida. We have um, Katie Corbin from South Carolina, Caroline Goodman from South Carolina, and Gia Canunes from South Carolina by way of Lima, Peru. And here, yours truly, Margie Marge, always coming to you on Thursdays to talk about everyday issues that impact humans. Now, before we even go further, I would like to wish all the nurses out there a happy Nurses Day. We know how hard you have worked throughout this COVID-19 pandemic. I mean, you guys have been amazing. You have been on the front lines and we thank you. We really, truly appreciate you. And guess what, guys? This week is also Teacher Appreciation Week. All these professions, teaching, nursing, and mothering professions. You know, these people take care of us. And so we would like to say thank you to the teachers. I don't know what we would have done without you teachers. I mean, throughout this pandemic, kids have been going to school virtually. Parents have had to um, work during that time. Teachers have picked up the slack. Thank you, thank you so much. We really appreciate you all. And you know, I, I don't wanna to give too much away about tonight's conversation. You see me looking down, right? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to look at my notes to make sure I don't miss anything. I don't wanna to give too much away, but we are having this great panel. And so at this time, we're gonna bring them into the house. Hold tight, here they come. Now, welcome everyone. Viewers, this is Humanity Chats. We do this on Thursdays, get together and talk about everyday issues that impact humans. Today, we have Gia Quinones, who is right there on the screen, Abba Kato Anda, we have Caroline Goodman, Dr. Sabrina Jackson, who is the people expert, and Katie Sky Corbin. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Margie. Thank you, Margie. Yes. It, is, it, is, it is great to have you guys with us. I mean, um, I know that you have all mothered in one way or the other. And um, before we get into the conversation, guys, um, ladies, gentlemen, YouTube viewers, uh, podcast listeners, go check out the MargieMarge.com blog because their bias are, are on there. You would love to learn about these women and the amazing things that they're doing. Um, now, ladies, I think we're going to get started here um, by asking you all what mothering means to you. And we're going to start with Dr. Sabrina. What does mothering mean to you? And share one fact about your mothering experience. Uh, uh, mothering means to me nurturing, caring, disciplining, laughing, crying, uh, being a lawyer, being a police officer, every single thing that your child needs, that's what a mother does. And so I remember once, and this is my mothering fact, I remember I, I was married at, at uh, I have a husband now, he's no longer my husband, but uh, he was angry with me about how I was defending and assisting my son with something. And he made the comment, you act like you his lawyer. 
And I said, oh, I'm more than a lawyer. I'm a mama. And I do everything. I go and get the lawyer. I go and get the doctor. I go and get whatever my child needs. And that's what mothers do. And we don't stop doing it just because they become adults. The only thing that we do do is move from being the supervisor of their life to being the supporter of their life. That's to being right. the supporter of their life. That's right. That's right, Dr. Sabrina. Um, yes, yes. We are mamas indeed. And we are lawyers. We are doctors taking care of the boo-boos. We are cheerleaders. I mean, uh, this week uh, I got threatened by a lion's man who was going to eject me from the stock of people because I just was not going to be quiet. Um, he was making the wrong calls and Margie was there. I mean, Margie was there to defend the cause. Um, Katie, what does mothering mean to you? And share a fun fact with us about your mothering experience. I think you're muted. There we go. <laughs> is that better? Yes, it is. So I, um, I'm a late in life mom. I uh, became a mom at 39. And so I, to me, mothering is sort of gathering in anyone who needs care in your vicinity. So I adopted nieces and nephews and anybody else who would let me. Um, but I also feel like it's important to kind of mother or nurture ourselves. Um, you know, it's, it's something we never stop, should stop doing. And um, I'm going to be honest, I, I, have a, I have a surprise I may announce later that I'm, I'm doing for myself <laughs> for Mother's Day. <laughs> but, um, but I grew up um, with a mom who um, was a um, home health nurse with DHEC, the Department of Health and Environmental Control in South Carolina. And so she did home visits, checking in on newborns. And um, we, she would come home with stories and then we would show up with things on people's um, um, doorsteps with things that they needed. So she, you know, supported moms all throughout my youth, my youth and growing up. So that's she's definitely been an example for me and how I've tried to help take care of other folks. And I believe I have a short person here that would like to say hi, if that's okay. Yes, that's that's wonderful. <laughs> oh, hi, honey. It's Viola. <laughs> Hi, Viola. Look, we are all your aunties. We're Luca's mama. That is Luca's mama. <laughs> yeah. Hi, sweetheart. Luca's not here, but I'll tell him you asked for him. Oh, is, she's going to say hi for, to Luca for you. You guys know yeah. each other. Well, then it goes back to Katie. Um, I mean, I said, Katie, Gia, it comes to you. What does mothering mean to you? And would you share a fun, uh, a fun, a fun fact about your mothering experience with us? Yeah, so mothering means the world to me. I think we had such a hard time having a child that for me, whenever I was finally able to have a child, it just meant the world to me. It has made me a better person. It has brought a deeper meaning to my life, you know, taking care of my boys, showing them what unconditional love is. You know, it means accepting my children as they are, showing them about my culture and also their dad's culture and how, you know, because we are from different countries. Uh, it means modeling behaviors that I want them to see it means showing them that love, the true love does exist, that, you know, that we can love all humans, nature. Uh, so to me, it's giving them all the love that I can possibly give them and also show them how I to love. A fun fact, I think I had a hard time because I'm, I don't have a tendency of very, like very, assertive sometimes so my boys are very high energy super super spirited let's put it that way so i've been having a hard time keeping up with them people say i have a lot of energy but they beat me <laughs> so it's hard to keep up at times and i've had to learn how to discipline one and it doesn't work for the other one for the little ones so i'm having to like have two discipline styles uh 
to be able to manage both of them and not let them pull their hairs out because they love to wrestle. Uh, so I'm learning how to be a boy mom now that they're getting older and wanting to do a lot of the stuff that I didn't do. So I'm learning how to get down and dirty and accept all the things that come with being a boy mom. Well, that that is um, that is fun getting to to I mean listening to you. Um, good luck on that. Good luck on that. It seems like you have younger kids. Yes, two and four. Oh, oh. my goodness! Oh, yeah. That's the best time. Yeah, that's the best time. Now we're coming to you, Caroline. What does mothering mean to you? And please share a fun fact with us about your mothering experience. I know you have lots. <laughs> yeah, lots of experiences, um, fun and not so fun. Um, but a lot like Gia, I think what mothering means to me is just unconditional love. Um, we have had several failed pregnancies, so I'm just grateful to be a mom to our daughter, Amelia, who's eight, and our son, Duke, who is two. Um, and like Kate, so um, our family is going to look a little different in, in a few years, but we're just really excited. Um, so maybe that's my fun fact. I don't know. <laughs> that wasn't going to be brought up. Um, but uh, I also have a hard time trying to decipher how to uh, discipline and parent an eight-year-old and a three-year-old. Um, so yeah, it's interesting at my house. <laughs> I hope you caught well, all that because uh, my computer is lagging a little bit. Don't worry. We can still hear you. And, um, you know, your house must be fun. Um, trying to parent that the, the age difference, it must be fun. Now it looks like we have people still logging in and joining us. Thanks to everybody who's joined us. Um, hello to our Facebook viewers and our YouTube viewers, to our podcast listeners. Hello, hello, welcome. Um, I see you dropping comments in the chat room. We will be getting to that. Ask your questions, communicate with us. We are here for you. And if you're watching and you haven't shared this with a friend or two or three, this is your time to do that. Now, as to you, Abba Kato, and uh, uh, tell us, what does mothering mean to you? And um, do you have a fun experience to share with us? Thank you for having me, Margie. Um, you know, I identify with what everybody said on here. And I think what I would add is that motherhood has and continues to be the biggest privilege of my life. I have found motherhood to be the most rewarding, but the most frustrating. Um, I found motherhood to be one of unconditional love, as somebody said, and also just sacrifice, unconditional sacrifice. Um, one thing I would add is the purpose of parenting, mothering, is to prepare the child for the road. You know, as, as mamas instinctively we want to protect them from all dangers. Uh, and that's a really good thing. But I think if we're doing this job right, then it means we're preparing them to meet the challenges that tend to come with life. Um, and I am a mother of two biological adult children. And I, I'm also the mother in love of just the most amazing daughter-in-law on the, on the planet. Um, one fun fact. Well, um, growing up, you know, when my kids were growing up, cleaning the kitchen, we'd always have songs. And so I have like a signature song I would sing with my son. Uh, that song was, um, I Know I'm Not the Only One by Sam Smith. And, and so then we'd sing it and use the broom as like our mic and our mic stand. And then we'd, you know, back to back. We had a whole choreography and we'd sing the song. And actually at Christmas, we, 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 we did like a, another performance of it. Now, neither of us, well, I can't sing very well, but we have a good time. With my daughter, the signature song is One Last Time from the Hamilton. Uh, and we love that. So we love to sing and dance in my house. <laughs> That's oh, one wow. fun fact. Yes, Alba, that sounds like my house. I don't have a great voice, but I like to sing too. That's and right. uh, 
Yes, and you know, viewers, I should tell you what mothering means to me. Um, as you all know, my name is Margie. Thanks, Abbas, for sharing. Um, thanks to our panelists um, for sharing their experiences with us. Um, mothering to me just means loving and caring. Um, as you see on the screen, um, today's topic is the different ways of caring for others because I believe that you can be a mother in so many ways. You don't have to be a biological mother. You could be an auntie. You could be a mentor. Um, you could be a teacher. There's so many ways to mother. And for me, um, I've had such joy mothering children from all walks of life, especially the girls, because they get to tell me stuff. I get to find out what's going on in school um, because my son doesn't tell me anything. And so mothering, that part of mothering is something that I enjoy. And a fun fact about me, oh, people, I like to dance. And I feel like I know how to dance, but then I realize that I don't. And so... Um, you know, my kid teaches me and he would be like, mom, move this way. And I think when you tell me left, that's when I go right. I can't really follow instructions. And so um, my dancing hasn't been the greatest, but it's decent and I love it. That's the fun fact. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Now I will go to the chat room because I see that we have lots of comments um, and see what who is here. We have people from YouTube. Um, we have Rosemont Sapon saying she loves the definitions of mothering and she loves surprises. Um, there we have Dawn Deck. Welcome, Dawn. She says, hi, my beautiful friends. Yes, hi. <laughs> and then thank you, Zoe Baraka, for joining us um, from Facebook. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thanks, Peter. Yes, um, we invite all the men to join us. Um, this is not an event for just women because you know what? Men, you have mothers too. So this is amazing. Um, thanks to Kola Kujiku um, and, and so many of the people that have joined us tonight. You are in for a treat because these women don't play. They're going to be sharing their experiences over the next one and a half hours. I know, I said it, one and a half hours. It's six women on the stage. What do you expect? We can talk for four hours. There are a few authors on here. We can really talk. Um, so yes, <laughs> at this time, we're going to be going into our questions. But before we get into those questions, um, you know, I think we have an ad that we would like to share with you. This is the mothering event. And um, we would like to um, tell, remind you to invite your friends to join us. And together, let's celebrate. Hello, hello, Dr. Sabrina. Hello, hello. <laughs> yes, yes, it's good to have you again. Now, our first question goes to you. Um, okay. We would like, yes, <laughs> we would like for you to share with us um, the joys of parenting um, and the woes that come with it, and also your thoughts on single parenting. Ooh, that's a that's a, a, a mouthful. Well, let me begin by saying that parenting again is the greatest gift that I've ever received outside of salvation. So, I absolutely love the fact that I am a mother. I love the fact that God allowed me to mother my son, who's now twenty eight, and uh, I have an adopted daughter who's thirty nine, and so just the experiences have been ha 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 and some low low lows. But as a single mother, it, it has been challenging because you really feel oftentimes that you're doing everything by yourself. But one of the things that I tell women when you are a single mother, 
you still have to remember to have other places and spaces that you enjoy in your life. You are not just a mother. You are still a woman. You still may be a sister. You yourself may be a daughter. So still leave room for navigating all the parts of your life, the things that bring you joy, the things that make you laugh, because we teach best by modeling. What do your children see you doing? And one of the things that I wrote about in my book, because I, I wrote a book about uh, raising a, a son as a single mother. And one of the things I talk about is being an example of real life. Because one of the things that I've for years heard women say, once they become single, oh, I'm not going to date. I'm never going to date. I'm going to wait till my child is 18 and the child too. Really? You're going to do that for 16 years? Ain't nothing normal about that. And so I remember my son saying to me after I married my second husband that he really loved the way he saw us interact. He saw us date. He saw us court. He saw him pick me up and then drop me off not spend the night. I'm just saying. So he, he was able to see that he saw us laughing and joking and being affectionate with each other. And he says to this day that that's an example of a relationship that he would want is that is somebody that really adores you, that laughs with you, that enjoys time with you. And I'm happy that I was able as a single mother to give him that example. Wow. Um, yes, yes. It's it's uh, it's inspirational to hear that you were able to give him that example. You know, uh, I was reading something online today, and it talked about um, how children, when they see you in a in an abusive relationship, um, that is what you are modeling for them to follow. And so, if you are in an abusive relationship and you have a child, it's probably better for you to step out of that because we model those behaviors, like Gia said earlier, uh, modeling the right behavior for the kids to follow and so um with your husband doing that for you um that is kind of cool um because then your son is going to be doing that for his bride or his future bride absolutely i really love the way that he treats women and he's dating and i love the way that he um one of the things that he used to tell his friends in high school because he was a jock you know he played basketball and he was the um, captain of the basketball team and all of that. And so women were always, you know, on them, you know, the whole athlete thing. But he used to tell his friends that he never had problems with women because he didn't lie to them. He says too often they lie. He says, so when you lie, you're going to get yourself in trouble. So I really appreciate that he sees himself as a person of integrity. He sees some a self as a person of value and he has a moral compass just for himself that he then can demonstrate when he is dating. So I hope that I was an example of that. Well, um, I, we hope that you were an example too. Uh, you know, we have the viewers are so engaged here. Zoe Baraka said, you have so much sass and she loves it. Well, thank you, Zoe. Thank you, Zoe. Um, she does, right, doesn't she? Um, now, Rosemont said the shadows we cast are so important to our kids. Um, and Sheila is out here saying, that's awesome. Yvonne says, great response, Dr. Sabrina. That's great counsel for single mothers. Um, thanks, Yvonne, for tuning in. Um, what a blessing to have you join us once again tonight. We appreciate you coming back week after week. Oh, look at Dr. Lugutera. She said, oh, children hey, with now, your eyes. Now there's problems connecting. No, no. Oh, I'm well, sorry. While I'm she's sorry. coming back, I think you can still hear me. Uh, I think we were. Uh, are you back, Marjorie? Yes, I am. I am here. Um, viewers, can you hear us? Can you okay, see us? Okay, I didn't hear you. We can okay. hear you. We can hear you and see you now. You kind of went away for a minute, but you're back. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Yes, children, listen with your eyes, um, says Dr. Lugutera. And so thank you. Thank you so much to our viewers. Um, we love it when you participate. We love it when you're, you are in this with us. Um, so thanks, Dr. Sabrina, for your wise words. I cannot wait um, to hear more from you. And at this time, we're going to go on another commercial break.
Yes, if you're here today and you're not subscribed to Margie TV, that was your reminder. Go subscribe. And if you haven't bought a copy of my book, you saw that. Same Elephants, the best book on earth. Go grab a copy today, right away. Yes. Um, welcome back, Katie. I think you're still muted. I'm trying to behave myself and we're kind of noisy around here. So I was trying to keep us quiet. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Now, Katie, we just had some powerful words from um, Dr. Sabrina and she was telling us that we have to model that behavior for our kids. And she also reminded us how important it was for single parents to invest in themselves. Now, um, you know, we're moving on from single parenting that and, um, and the modeling of behavior but that is something that is very important. But we also want to talk about other um, issues that affect mothering. And um, the two that come to mind for me are infertility and um, adoption. And you know, even before I ask you that question, um, I know that when I was younger, I had a dream that I was gonna have four kids. We were gonna go on vacation. I had all their names picked out. I had my life pretty much set, you know? And so I really got to it, my four kids, and I was, you know, I'm gonna have one boy and three girls, and there was Asida, Ayeyi, and Shira, Adam. Yeah, and so Adam came around, and we were waiting for Inshira, Inshira never came. Um, and I, you know, I kept trying. I've had all these treatments, but somehow it never worked out but i am thankful to god for that blessing that at least i got that one and i know that um infertility is a very stressful time um you spend so much money on that um you're not able to afford certain things because you're probably spending money on medicine and then for some people they probably don't even have the funds to do that what are some of the ways that um, we can combat um, infertility and find happiness um, for mothering? Well, uh, we tried for almost 10 years to, to have uh, biological children. And um, the things that I learned during the process were very important. Um, I learned to completely change how I eat and um, how to take care of my physical body and to prepare it, you know, we were trying to prepare it to be a vessel, to carry a child. And I knew something wasn't working right. Um, so it's a lot of time and planning, but then also learning how to ask for help, how to ask for mental health support. Um, and luckily I have family members and friends um, who are really good with that kind of stuff. I forgot my fun fact to share earlier was to um, recommend that if possible, have a mom who is a pediatric nurse. <laughs> <laughs> and she also had some issues with infertility herself. So I definitely had like support as a mom, but she started a good 10 years younger than we did. So she, she eventually had three kids and um, um, it was really hard in there for a while to have good mental health. I'm actually uh, talking to someone. My book club read uh, last year, maybe you should talk to someone, which is a great book on mental health and mental health support. And um that uh, spoke to me a lot. And I'm uh, finally really sitting down and talking to someone to talk about the grief that happens when you have plans to have four kids or so many kids or whatever the plan is in your heart and then it doesn't happen and you can't see it happening. And every month you're reminded <laughs> that it's not happening, <laughs> right? And it's, lots, it's a lot of money and there's, you know, we saw lots of specialists and no one, could give us any answers, which is also frustrating. <laughs> um, but I, in the meantime, learned so much about how to eat to best support myself, which has worked out really well, as I've discovered over the last few years, that I have an autoimmune imbalance, that if I, if I avoid eating certain things, uh, at least not too often, <laughs> really sugar and wheat for me are like, don't do that. <laughs> um, and taking time to rest throughout the day. Um, I'm a big fan and proponent of restorative yoga. I'm a yoga teacher. I can't remember if we've already discussed this on here, but I am um, in a little studio here in Spartanburg. And this is the style of yoga that I prefer to teach. I get out and walk all day long, but then I need to stop and rest because for me, chronic stress is 
the thing that seems to be linking back to all my health problems. And I'm pretty sure that it was a big influence on my fertility attempts. <laughs> I'm now in my mid forties, which I think I look pretty good for <laughs> being in my mid forties over here. I think my my lifestyle and, eat, and style of eating is helping. Um, but, um, you know, we're not really trying for that goal anymore. Although Viola is asking for a baby, as she puts it. <laughs> and um, so we um, um, have been um, asking, you know, folks if we can borrow their babies <laughs> so that we can give them back. <laughs> I guess we're not sure we're quite up for another another super young kiddo. We're, uh, we're uh, going to be in our 60s, I think, by the time she graduates from anything. <laughs> so, um, um, you know, exactly. It's, it's, and it's something people don't talk about enough. Um, I have a number of folks who've reached out to me to ask about doing like yoga classes specifically for folks trying to get pregnant and that, and I have done some things like that. And I've got books on yoga for fertility and various things that you can do, um, to, you know, improve the odds. But the key thing for me is slowing down the pace of what society thinks we should be going at. Um, in this country, we tend to think we have to go all the time, go, 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 or else you're not worthy. Even as, you know, as a mom, as, uh, especially as a woman, <laughs> if you don't, aren't, you know, scheduled every minute of every day, then you aren't doing something right. And um, as someone who's like borderline extrovert, introvert, I need to, find that balance or it will absolutely, you know, throw my health under the bus. Um, um, so that's where, where I'm coming from when I'm planning my week out. I'm like, okay, where can I put in some time where I can stop and lay down under a tree? I've been teaching a lot of outdoor yoga here this last year. Um, or um, put my legs up a, up a wall. Um, but I, but where I can have at least a good 15, 20 minute break. And I wish I had figured that out sooner. I thought, needed to be doing all this strengthening and hardcore yoga. Um, and um, that's not what my body needed. When you have autoimmune conditions, which often affect infertility, your body needs to heal. It needs time to get better. Um, and if you just keep pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, and for me in particular, additional hormones never, uh, never went over very well. <laughs> I did not respond well to those. Um, so in the meantime, I found acupuncture and uh, my husband actually just brought me a cup of raspberry tea, <laughs> raspberry leaf <laughs> tea to sip on, um, but figuring out different ways to help support fertility and now to also support mental health after the fact of, you know, I, I will never have a biological child unless, you know, something really wild and crazy happens. <laughs> um, um, but finding the, the balance between the two. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, finding the balance between the two. Um, viewers, Katie um, experienced infertility problems. Um, she adopted a beautiful baby, which we, we saw her. We saw her on the screen earlier. Um, they have a loving family, um, nurturing. It, it is tough. <laughs> and as Katie was saying, Look, um, acupuncture, I, I'm someone who cannot sit still. I would have to lay there for them to stick those needles. I did so many things that I never thought that I would do all for that sacrifice of wanting to have that additional child. Um, see, our, our viewers are engaged here. Zoe Baraka is saying that, God bless you, Margie. I've come out of this beautiful. Well, Zoe, thank you for your compliments. There's some days that it's hard. I mean, I don't know. Um, I'm just human. Like when I get someone's Christmas card and I see their three beautiful kids or I see people go on vacations and it's like I'm being selfish because I do have one at least, right? But um, it's just the reality. When you've held on to a dream, like Katie was saying, um, we need mental health to intervene with some of these things. When you've held on to a dream, it's like it's hard to let that dream go. Um, and so I'm thankful, so grateful to God for his mercies. Uh, but every now and then it just, it does, it does get to me. Um, thank you, Toy, for joining us. You said 
Toy is saying that, Katie, you have amazing strength. Um, yes, yes. And Toy, thank you for being so supportive all the time, um, reading our books and, you know, supporting Katie as well. Um, Rosemont is still in the house. She says she's thanking you for, for you sharing your vulnerability. Yes, um, it takes a strong woman to do that. And, and, and thank you. Thank you. Zoe says, God bless you, Katie, as well. Um, and that God led you to adopt. Um, you know, it's, um, it's a bit emotional, guys. Thank you for sharing your words with us, Katie. Um, thank you, thank you so much. I think it's time to bring to bring Gia into the house. Yeah. Well, welcome, welcome back, Gia. Um, that ad that played there was a book by Rosemont Owens out of Minnesota. And that book says, Apples in a Seed, um, Unleashing Your Potential. I, I believe I've butchered the title, but you know, Rosie's book um, basically tells us that we don't know what we're capable of in the future and that we should value each and every person she talks about in the book she talks about nine um phenomenal people and their life and um, the impact that they've had and so you know that is what um i see now as i as i talk to katie and she talked about the power of you know tapping into your inner self um accepting that maybe your dreams will not come to pass and adopting and finding the value of everything around you. Um, we come to you, Gia. I know you're originally from Lima, Peru, and um, you have to share your ideas um, about mothering because here we are, Katie is a white woman and she's adopted a black kid. Um, what does mothering look like in different cultures? Are we able to teach the kids about diff about you know those differences? Um, just just share your heart out with us. Hi, Margie. Thank you. I think it, it depends. Coming from Peru and seeing my mom teach us the traditions that that are native of our country, and then coming to the U.S. and seeing my friends and having different traditions in their own homes, like I I was born in Lima, Peru, and uh, migrated to the U.S. when I was 11. So I was still pretty young, and I moved to rural Mississippi, a uh, very small town, uh, also very traditional in a way, in their own way, they were very traditional. So seeing, navigating those two cultures was kind of stressful at one point for me because my parents were very strict, and some of my friends didn't have strict parents. But I guess in, in my culture, family always comes first. Whatever your mom says goes, right? Like I said, you're going to do it because I say so. No reasons, no excuses, no explanation. Do it because I'm telling you to do it. Uh, so there was no questioning. If you even open your mouth to question it, I'm like, Mm, are you going to talk back? I'm like, no, never, never. I would never talk back. <laughs> so, you know, and, and it's the same, I think, for me now with my children. I'm Peruvian. Uh, my kid's dad, he's Puerto Rican, born here, but Puerto Rican. Uh, so different traditions, different ways of growing up. Um, so it's been, and they're born here, right? So it's like we have to mix Peruvian tradition, Puerto Rican tradition, the American culture. So it's been quite, quite a journey, right? And a lot of compromise because a lot of times that's what it takes, compromise. Because I have a different way of seeing things because I see it with, you know, the way I was raised and he sees things based on his experiences and the way he was raised. And then Luca and Leo come with things that they're seeing at school because that's where they go to school and have, you know, very diverse a group of friends and so we're like oh god okay well let's try to shape it into what's best for them because 
ultimately they're growing up here in the U.S. They're not growing up in Lima. They're not growing up in Puerto Rico. They're growing up here. So, you know, navigating those three cultures is going to be definitely something for them to learn how to adapt. Um, I think being, like I said to you, being a mother for me is, it's an honor to be a mom for me. I'm, I'm so grateful because I had like a hard time. Like Luca is a, a, a rainbow baby and so is Leo. They're both rainbow babies because I had um, several miscarriages and, and, you know, every day I'm grateful. And I think culture, I think for me, it was very hard to complain at one point or even like become frustrated at times because I felt like I can't, I can't get frustrated or I can't be or I can't complain that I'm tired because it was like dishonoring the fact that God blessed me with a child. So I had to hold it in and be like, no, just be grateful. Just be grateful until I learned that it's OK. It's OK for me to feel tired, that it was OK for me to at times become frustrated and didn't mean that I was not grateful to have them in my life and to be their mom. Um, you know, culturally and specifically in Peru, we celebrated uh, the second Sunday of May, but there's many countries in Latin America that celebrate it on the 10th of May, like in Mexico, right? It's usually like getting family together, going out. But in Peru, we don't just celebrate our mothers and our grandmothers. We also celebrate uh, the our dead mothers. You know, it's, it's a tradition to visit their graves uh, of our deceased mothers, of our grandmothers, of wives, and offer flowers. Uh, it's, it's something that it's tradition, you know, you, you're just not celebrating that our mothers are alive, but also the ones that have left us, but are still with us. Um, so that's, that's one tradition. Schools, it's like a whole week event. Schools will have like plays and dances to celebrate Mother's Day. And then usually you leave school early <laughs> so that you can have the whole weekend for, you know, to celebrate your mom. So it's, it's a whole week long, you know, celebration when you honor your mom uh, or the mothers in the family. It's something that, you know, mothers tend to lead the home, right? That the, the husband that that provides, but mom is like the leader of the home uh, at the top. You, what mom says you do, she knows what's going on at home. Uh, she kind of sets the tone for how it's going to go for the day. You know, she disciplines. So it's um, it's something that I miss whenever I moved here to the U.S. when it was Mother's Day or any type of like Father's Day, Teacher's Day. I miss those um, school celebrations where the, you didn't have class. All you did was dances, recite poems, uh, you know, folklore, different types of things just to honor parents. Like all the parents would come, they would sit around the main uh, area of the playground and different classes would have, would have come up with their uh, skits or, or celebration to honor their, you know, their mom. So I miss that personally. I wish schools would do that here. Uh, and during that week also we would create gifts, like handmade gifts for our, for our moms. And that was part of class, you know, they would order like a list of things and we would create handmade things. And on that day where we had the celebration, we would give it to our, to our moms. So I think culturally it's all about honoring our moms and the hard work that they put and the con unconditional love that they give us. Uh, and, you know, different countries on the 10th and then in Peru specifically in the second Sunday of the month. So exciting. Yeah, exciting. I think just for that week, I might want to move to Peru um, <laughs> because I want to be celebrated all week. I mean, partying and dancing, that's just my kind of thing. And you, I, I hear you when it comes to that third culture thing, because when you have all these cultures that are um, in your household, uh, it is hard. You're trying to get the child to adjust. And um it could even be the fact that you're from New York and your spouse is from South Carolina. It doesn't even have to be from different countries um, or different races. Uh, people just grow up in different households and have different rules. I mean, I know that my husband and I are both originally from Ghana, but 
he grew up in a household that did things a certain way. You know, they speak really good English and read and take vacations. And I'm not saying my household didn't do that, but like when I was a kid, I didn't go to the dentist. He went to the dentist all the time. <laughs> So when it's time for a dental appointment, I'm the one missing it. And he's like, he's got to go. And I'm like, there's nothing wrong with his teeth, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, you bring a good point about the language, you know, like at home, we speak English, but we also speak Spanish. But my kids speak English at school or at the daycare that they go to. And whenever I speak to them in Spanish, specifically Luca, he'll answer me in English. And I'm, I have, sometimes I have to tell him, I don't understand. Like, I need you to speak to me in Spanish so you can practice. And he will be like, uh, no. <laughs> I'm like, yes, you know, you know it. You can understand me. So it's navigating to, you know, the fact that you want them to embrace that culture and the language and to be proud of, you know, their roots. So it's like constantly trying to teach them and, and use the language at home. You know, in my house, my mom was like, at home, we only speak Spanish. But my brother and I, the more we learn English, we would sneak around and just talk English and she would hear us and she's like, nope, nope, none of that in this house. You gotta speak Spanish. So I'm trying to do that same thing I'm at home, but again, you know, uh, it but does not, every, not everyone wants to speak Spanish. And no, I'm like, okay, no. I'm losing a battle. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't always work. And you have the audience so engaged. <laughs> Sheila said, that sounds like a mom from Ghana. Um, and that this is powerful. Since they're growing up in the US, you need to see how you can merge the three cultures so we don't confuse the children. Yeah, that's right. And Zoe, she said, yes, yeah, speak the truth. Um, yeah, so many mothers need to learn this. Thank you, Zoe. Um, once again, we have none Kosia from Connecticut saying, it's okay to be vulnerable sometimes, mom. Thanks for sharing your experience. Um, God bless moms. Um, well, Shirley is watching from England. She said, Marjorie is um, funny. Uh -huh. Girl, <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. Well, thank you, Gia, for sharing this. This is so important information, you know, and viewers, listeners, I'm sure people are watching from different backgrounds. You see that Gia is sharing um, a, a, an experience that happened in Peru. And somebody says, that sounds like a Ghanaian mom. We are more the same than we are different. And together we can go far. That, that unity is so important. So as we continue to care for these young ones, I hope you are getting some nuggets from everybody here today. Um, we're going to be bringing, we're going to be bringing Caroline into the house. And so um, let's, let's bring Caroline. Yes, um, viewers, visit TashmaTalks.com to learn more about Tashma. As Gia and I were talking, um, she, she was talking about speaking Spanish and English in the house. Tashma's thing is sign language, so learn more about her. You saw that she has some great reviews from the Boy Scouts of America and so many others. And I believe that Caroline and Tashma um, we're on the show in January to talk about your quarantine hustle. So go back to that podcast. Go listen to those uh, women. They talk about humankind and all sorts of great things. Welcome back, Caroline. Thank you. And Tashma is an amazing mama, too. Well, she is. She is. I wish we could have 25 mamas on here with us. Um, now, Caroline, <laughs> you know, as Gia was talking, she mentioned rainbow babies. I know you have young children and you have a lot of experience with rainbow babies. So we're just going to pick up from where Gia left off. Um, share your experience with us. Sure. Can you hear me okay, Marty? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, so we, I mentioned earlier that we have had four uh, failed pregnancies. 
So both of our our babies are also rainbow babies. Um, I've had two miscarriages and two ectopic uh, pregnancies, which are, if, if you don't know, the pregnancy is in the tube, in the fallopian tube, so it has to be terminated. Um, so I've had one of each in between both my children. So um, I say that the first two losses were just completely devastating. Um, the the second two were also, but uh, they were after Amelia. So, you know, when you're a mother of a young one, you just kind of pick up and, and go and, and I feel like becoming um, a mom to a little one after so much hardship, you just appreciate what you already have. I think Gia said that too. Um, so yeah, those, the first two, uh, losses were just really hard blows. And, um, thanks to my husband and, uh, my family, they just pulled me out of just complete darkness. And, um, I always like to tell this story when I tell about, um, my experience is when I had my first ectopic, uh, I didn't have any children yet. Um, I had to go to Mary Black and get um, injections, and they put me in a labor and delivery room. Um, number one, a labor and delivery room for someone who's having to get an injection to terminate her pregnancy is completely horrible, and I hope nobody ever has to go through that. Um, but the nurse that was there, she um, she was incredible. Um, her name was Nurse Payne, and I don't. If this was at Mary Black, so I don't. I don't know where she works anymore. Um, but she told me after she gave me my injection that she would see me um, in a year in the same room for a happier occasion. And you know, when we went to um, have Amelia, we had her about four days early, um, or four, four days late. She was stubborn and didn't want to come. Um, nurse Payne was the, our nurse and she ended up delivering Amelia. So that was just a complete um, blessing to us. Um, so that's just an incredible story. And I always love to tell that because uh, mamas who are in the thick of uh, loss and experiencing that grief, I just like to encourage that there's, there's hope. Um, you know, God answers prayers in ways that we never see coming. Um, so, yeah. Wow, Caroline, thank you for sharing. Um, I think you got some emotions out there. Um, you know, um, I had a follow-up question for you, but I will come up with that um, during our next session because um, um, we have we have just about a f um, 35 minutes um, for our second half. And, you know, um, yes, um, Shirley is watching from England and she said, thanks for sharing such personal information. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, um, <laughs> I saw this message that I really got to show an audience. We're sorry, we can't show everybody's um, messages because the messages just keep popping up and we keep trying to scroll. But Zoe Baraka said, Caroline, girl, your lipstick on flip. Yes. Thank so, you. Yes. You know, Zoe, she actually sells lipstick and she has gifted me some on flick lipstick that I am going to be wearing next time you see me on screen because um, I think I have the same color that you have, right? So I, I was a little extra tonight and I mixed two colors together. <laughs> um, here I am. I was trying to. I was trying to be. Uh, I was trying to be all that. But oh, Valinda, thank you for joining us. Valinda says she's an OB nurse, and the most difficult part of her job is to see a mother lose her child. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for what you do. Yeah. Thank you so much, Valinda, and thank you for joining us tonight. This is amazing. Dr. Lugutera is back. She says it's incredible, Caroline. Thanks for sharing your story. Um, yeah, you have so much love here. You have so much. God bless the nurse. Yes, Zoe, God bless Verlinda. Um, yeah, you have so much love here. Um, yeah, and you know, as you said, um, there is hope. And whenever I think about hope, 
I think about this amazing person who is going to be joining us um, for our next um, um, question answer um, segment. Sometimes I get confused with my words, but you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, people bear with us. We're, we're so grateful to everyone who's listening in tonight. I'm thinking we're probably going to exceed our one and a half hours. Um, but you know what? We're sticking in there. It's all about mothering and we're going to be bringing Abba Kato Ander into the house. Well, you saw that, um, Reflections of a Hope Monger by Abba Keto Anda. It's an amazing book. I read it. I loved it. I was inspired by it. There are some really cool reviews out there on the internet, and I'm so glad that I got my hands on the book. Um, welcome back, Abba. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, Abba, you are the mother of an adult child, and it feels weird to say adult child. Is there something like that? Like, you <laughs> mother don't it does feel weird because you know in many ways they are still my babies you know yes they're adults but the the emotion the love this big love i have for them it never changed but yes they are adults and yes the parenting has to change some yes <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Um, I know that your platform is Hope, and we will get to Hope, the second part of our program. Um, you know, you're always welcome to insert Hope into um, whatever you have to say to us. What do you say to mothers out there who have adult children or who are mother-in-laws during this period where, um, you know, all we're talking about is loving on mamas? Um, there may be some moms who probably don't even have a great relationship with their kids anymore as they are older or they're not getting those phone calls. Um, what do you say? Right. So it's, a, it's definitely a journey it's definitely a process. I always say Archie didn't give me enough time to, to baby him. He was always just a very independent minded young man, went off to college, knew what he wanted to do, started his business, got married all in a very you know short span of time. And so he grew up before I was ready. And I remember just you know uh, feeling sad, not sad because I was, I was extremely proud of him and everything he'd accomplished and he was doing in his life. But there was certainly a transition for me, me having to give up being the number one woman in his life, being the mama who's, you know, always there in, the, in that sense for him. It was definitely a process. Um, my heart hasn't changed. You know, as I sit here talking to you today, uh, my daughter, Alyssa, who is about to graduate today was her day one of her IB exams. So I'm thinking about her today. Uh, my daughter in love, Sarah, she got her second um, COVID vaccine today. So I'm thinking about her. Archie today had four wisdom teeth taken out. So, you know, my heart, my mind is still very much with them, even as I, I understand that they are grown, they are adults, and they have to do their own thing. I think that some of the principles I've, I've adopted all through their lives still apply. And then, of course, some things have evolved. Um, one thing a mentor of mine told me, and she said it in Fanti, Nyame no Shemoframa. That is to say, God looks after children. And so I learned early on in my, you know, mothering journey, um, that just the power of, you know, uh, especially when I felt overwhelmed, especially when I didn't know what to do. One of the things I would always do is to just give it to God, pray for them and pray for his, prote his protection on their lives. And so I encourage every mother in your, your, your journey to do the same as well. Mothering is not easy. You will fail many times in your journey. At least I did. You know, you'll make mistakes. You will drop the ball. The important thing, and I'm going into hope again. Hope is such a part of me. I always find myself drifting in there. Is, is you know, pick yourself up, um, um, give it to God, and then you keep going. But I think most importantly, the love you have for your child will never, ever 
fail, never ever change, but understand that you are raising your child to be able to live and thrive in this world. And so definitely overprotecting them, you know, doesn't serve them any good. And, and certainly when they become adults, then understanding that, all right, let me love them, but allow them respect their choices, respect, you know, the things they, 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 they choose to do. It's really interesting because everything you've done as a parent gets you to this point where you're going to believe that they will make good choices, hopefully as a result of what you've taught them, how you've modeled things to them. And if they make mistakes, they'll pick themselves up and, and keep going. But it's an absolute privilege to mother children of adults. I think that one thing I absolutely love is the fact that my kids are truly my best friends. Um, you know, I have such a special relationship and they have a great relationship with their dad as well. Uh, but certainly I, I appreciate the relationship I have with them. I'm grateful for it. I think that uh, if there's a message for mothers, don't throw away, what's the, the, the saying, the, ba the, ba the baby with the bath water. Sometimes, you know, some people may want so desperately to be right that they miss out on the important thing, which is nurturing, you know, uh, and I'm calling them child, but your adult child, nurturing them, loving on them, building a true relationship with them, understanding that the relationship will evolve. And yes, my children teach me a whole lot about life now, about social media, about, you know, current events and so on. I absolutely love it. It's, it's a privilege. I, I don't take it lightly. And, you know, I think motherhood, um, for an adult child and all through the child's life as well is certainly one of resilience and, and tenacity. And yes, you must keep going. So that's my, my, my story. Resilience and tenacity. Um, you know, listening to you um, makes my heart happy in that um, our kids may not, well, for me personally, my kid may not be as old as your kid, but taking that advice and knowing that you don't have to be overbearing or overprotective of your kid and that you have to let them fly um, is, is, is really important. And so thank you. I see that the audience is excited about you. Oh my goodness. Yes. Um, Abba dropping nuggets says Rosemond. Yes, Rosemond, she is, she is. Um, faith of our mothers living still. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Mo. Um, Pastor Mo has the word. And this is Dr. Vivian. Dr. Vivian said, yes, yeah, so I just failed today as I transitioned from motherhood to consultant mother. I knew she would say something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you will make mistakes. Pick yourself up and, and try it again. That's what's important, you know, yes, yes. respect them, respect, you know, I think that especially for, the, for some of us from some of our ethnic groups, right? We focus so much on respect for elders, but I think it's also important that you show respect to your children all through their lives and especially as they transition into adulthood, you know, so that, you know, and I think that helps them build that self-esteem as well. So absolutely. Yes, well, um, Ya Afoda Atubra is complimenting you that you look stunning and she's thanking you for sharing your story. Um, yes, thank you so much for, for being active on this platform and for joining us. We so appreciate you. Now, remember, if you haven't subscribed, then you are not complete. You got to go subscribe. Um, she's, Sheila says, allow them and respect their choices. Yes, it's not easy. It's not easy. Back in the day, I used to pick up suits for my kid. And um, anybody who knows Margie knows Margie loves color. And so, you know, the suit would be green or it would be some kind of color. And now that he's older, he's not having any of that. No, mama, you ain't going to choose my prom jacket for me. It's not, it's not happening. And I've got to respect that because I'm, you know, if I'm thinking that you're looking fine, is you coming in all that bling and... <laughs> He's not looking at that. Yes, yes. Nana Kosia Kwesen says, Abba, I want to be you when I grow up. Well, oh. um, yes. And you know, Nana was, um, she's a she's a good friend. Um, I call her Jackie Chan because she's got some karate moves. Oh. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Newman, we missed you. We haven't seen you on the chats in a while. She says, it's so important. Show respect to your children. Um, 
Look, people are learning from your message and we can't display all the messages. So go back on Margie TV YouTube to look at the live chat for the YouTube comments and go on Facebook Margie TV. You will be able to read the comments. And if there are any questions that you have to answer to, you will glad you will be able to do that. And I'm sure that our viewers are going to be grateful. Um, thank you for sharing this with us, Abba. As we get ready to go into the second part of our program, our panelists are gonna have to talk faster because we're running late on time. We're gonna be bringing Dr. Sabrina back into the house. And you know what? I just have to give this person a shout out because she's watching from England. And she says, well done, Marge. Ohima Enchua, Ohima Bakupe. This is my sister in love and I love her dearly. Thank you, Ohima, for staying up late, girl. Thank you, thank you. Um, we're gonna be bringing Dr. Sabrina in. And so thank you, Abba. We will thank see you. you in a little bit. <laughs> Oh my goodness. You know what? I cannot believe that we've been at Humanity Chats for a year. Um, look at all that we've talked about, racial injustice. We have celebrated Black History Month, Women's History Spotlights. We have had Dr. Sabrina talk to us about our New Year's resolutions. Yes, yes. yes. That was that was a fun conversation. Go back and listen if you miss Dr. Sabrina because the nuggets that she dropped have kept me going since January. I really appreciate you joining us today. And I see that you have a baby right there. Can you show us the love? That's my baby. This Miss Sugar. And she will not she will not let me be on long without wanting to just sit in my lap. And so she's a new baby. She's only uh four months old. So, you know, I zoom and boom with her all the time. <laughs> hey, Miss Sugar, you are famous because you are on Margie TV. Yeah. She's just chilling. As long as she in my arms, she's fine. If I put her down, she'll start barking. So Chilling like a villain. Well, thank you, Dr. Sabrina. Now, we have heard um, the nuggets that have been dropped by your fellow panelists. They have talked about, you know, the importance of culture, hope, um, parenting, adult children, parenting young ones. We've heard about rainbow babies. Um, we've heard about infertility, adoption. Looks like we, we're covering topics that should be covered probably over six months. Um, and at this point, I want to ask you, Mother's Day is so commercialized these days. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think that, you know, anytime we commercialize something like we do Christmas, it sometimes takes the core meaning out of it. We do it because of what's on the media or we do it because we're trying to impress other people we want our siblings to think we are the ones that's bossing, so we give the biggest gift and things of that nature. But some of the greatest gifts I've ever received are just about time, because you cannot buy time. You lose time, you know, you're living time. And so I remember when I think about my mother, my mother's gone on to glory now, but when we were little, she would have us watch uh, on Saturdays. We had this show that was like a horror show and we would pull the drapes and we'd make the room real dark and she'd pop popcorn and we'd be in the movie and it'd be real quiet. As soon as she yells, tickle time, whoever she caught 
she would tickle you until you're about to pee on yourself. Oh my God. When I say that's one of the greatest memories for me, and I have done that with my children. I've made sure that I've given them memories that don't have anything to do with stuff, don't have anything to do with money. Uh, experiences that they can share with their children. And then talking about the history of our family. Like I know uh, my great grandmother and her father, who was named Mose Green, had 33 children. Out of the 33, I knew nine of them. And so to be able to pass that heritage and facts and information to the next generation is so important. So it's bigger. The gifts and just get, getting around, sitting around, playing a game, talking, you know, playing a dozen sometimes, you know, talking about each other. My daddy used to talk about my nose. He used to say, your nose so little, girl, you can't smell nothing. That's a hit. <laughs> so I think that as we move into this new space, this new normal because of the pandemic, many of us are going to have to go back to the days of old the days of just sitting and talking, sitting on the porch, getting some lemonade and just swinging and chilling because we haven't had that in so long. And so this Mother's Day, do something different. Do something that shows your time and your heart and not just the money or going out to the fancy restaurants. Now, don't get me wrong. I like a fancy restaurant. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I love it. But I love just the time sitting in the floor, everybody laughing till we crying. Those are the things that create the greatest memories. The great memories indeed. So well spoken. Um, the gift of time. You know, um, yesterday I drove um, almost four hours to go watch a soccer game. And um, I was thinking to myself, I am so behind with work, but what if I miss this game and it's my kid's last game of the season because it was a semifinal and they were supposed to play in the final on Saturday? Well, I'm so glad that I gave that gift of time because they lost one nail yesterday. Oh. But I was there um, when they lost and oh my goodness, his face dropped and the kids, the goalie, he is such a great kid. He was crying. It was just really sad. These kids rode on a bus for four hours to go play, and they lost one nail. I mean, if, wow. they, if they had been at home, they probably would have won. But yeah. that yeah. was the gift of time. And um, I really, you know, as much as I didn't want to go, I, I'm so glad that I was able to do that. I'm so glad that you went too, because this is going to be such a great memory for your child. And so sometimes we think about how things are impacting us, but sometimes we got to think about how it's going to impact them. They just kind of want to see you. They want to look up and say, oh, my mama here. And so like you said, that you were yelling and that people wanted you to calm down. Sometimes, uh-uh, that's what I do. I yell and scream for my baby. And so... <laughs> Yes, Dr. Sabrina, I could see you yelling and screaming. And, you know, nobody would know that you're on the cover of magazines with your fancy, beautiful <laughs> dresses. And no, no, nobody would think that. No, not at all. Um, and I see, I see, oh my goodness, we've got viewers from England. There's Yvonne. Yes, thank hey. you, Yvonne. Yes, and Zoe again says, God bless you. Um, yes, um, Dr. Newman said, love this. Give your children memories, experience. And she's one person that she's for that experience. Oh my goodness, I don't even want to hang out with her. She will have you hiking and That's doing what I do. I do different things. Like I was in Vegas last week ziplining on Fremont Street. Yes, do it, Girl. yes. Yes, hunty. Yes. Zip lining like Superman. No, no, no. I am not at that level yet. I remember one time. You should I see your face. Your face, your whole facial expression changed. <laughs> yes, because when I, you know, I will hold everybody's bags and just cheer you on as you are ziplining. I'm just not adventurous. I have tried. I got to pray to Jesus for that. I got to pray to get better. Um, now we have on him uh, saying it's about memories. So lovely to hear my kids sing the favorite lullabies 
that she sang to them um, when they went to bed. Oh, that is amazing that your kids still remember. Um, yes. You know, I I sang, but I don't think anybody remembers because my voice ain't that good, but that's okay. <laughs> it's not about the sound. It's not about the quality of the song or your voice. It's about the quality of the time. Mm, mm, mm. You want to oh. just give that time. My mother, my mother used to sing like really high, like operatic sounding, and she would sing, and we talk about it to this day. The song you're just a love machine. She sang it like it was an opera song. We're like, no, don't do that. But it's a great memory. <laughs> yes, yes, great memory indeed. And so at this time, we're getting ready to bring Katie back. We will see you soon, Dr. Sabrina. All righty. <laughs> You got you back, Katie. Um, now, viewers, you just saw that promotion about autism awareness. This past um, April was Autism Awareness Month. As you know, we're celebrating Mother's Day. Let us remember that there are mothers with children with different abilities, and there are mothers that are sacrificing and may also be going through tough times. Let us remember to be supportive of all mothers. And you know, um, as you've learned about Project Hope Foundation, look them up. Um, you could maybe send a little donation their way and they will be very appreciative of your support. Katie, um, you know, as we're getting ready to wrap up the second half of our, of our conversation, what are your tips for physical health for mothers who may be listening today? I shared my personal secret to mental and physical health. For me, it is resting enough. Um, you know, we are told we need to walk and be skinny and, you know, all, you know, all, I'm a big fan of walking. I'm not going to let me, don't let me, I like to hike. I like to do all, you know, I love to be outside, but it's also important to balance what you're doing. Um, so you want to get the heart going, get, you know, your um, uh, wonderful hormones, <laughs> you know, they give you good energy, uh, pumping by doing exercise and flowing. For me, especially doing it with other people is uh, great for accountability and lifting the spirits. Um, so having it, you know, groups of people that you meet with, um, but also stopping to rest because people think they need to go, 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 go to lose weight. But a lot of times it's because um, our hormones are out of balance and um, we need to learn how to better support our um central nervous system. Um, I personally, of course, am a big advocate for yoga as well as walking. Um, so many of the poses help to balance the different sides of the body and to um, encourage the um, internal organs towards health through twists and um, um, giving them strengthening various parts of the body, but also resting different parts of the body. But here is the thing that I am doing um, for Mother's Day. So I love our, we love our daughter. We love our little family. Um, but I have actually um, run off with all of our hotel points and I'm going to go somewhere and sleep by myself <laughs> for two nights next week. <laughs> so taking time for yourself, I think is really, really important. I am so lucky. I've been saying I was going to do it for like six months, but first I wanted to feel like I was going to be safe going to somewhere else to stay. <laughs> And um, I've been warning them that I was going to do it and I did it. <laughs> um, but even if you can't do a whole two nights, um, this has taken a lot of planning and a lot of help from others. But even just to say, I'm going to take 15 minutes to go read this book or go um, 
stop and breathe or if you know if i'm gonna always come back to yoga because that's what works for me um, um to take time it doesn't have to be a full 75 minutes 90 minutes week i mean if you can get a whole week take a whole week to go reset if you can um but to ask for help from your friends we were having a discussion about that this last week um you know people are honored when you ask them for help um so to not hesitate to say hey i need this <laughs> you know whether it be some meal assistance you know I'm gonna have trouble this next week. Um, you know, we're getting food prepped. Can anybody help? You know, share this menu. You know, can we can we each like one person chop the you know bell peppers, another person prep the kale, whatever it is that you've got going on, um, to ask for help with whatever it is. But to stop and realize what it is that you that you need, um, and to figure out how to ask for it. Um, I was on the phone call with my mom a good bit last night because we were figuring out how to. You know, navigate a, a, a little person whose body is changing and, and you know, brain is so, you know, growing so quickly um, and how to keep up our, our um, you know, parenting techniques and parenting tactics. You know, I, I, I still want to snuggle my little baby. I miss my baby wearing days. I loved, you know, um, carrying her around like that. And that is definitely a good workout. If you have a baby that little, that is one way to keep working. But the key thing, if you're you know, doing any baby wearing is to make sure you're doing something to counterbalance that movement. So I tended to wear her on the front. So I needed to, you know, make sure I did a good bit of heart opening movement. So even if, you know, just opening your arms up overhead and just making time to move differently throughout the day. Um, I have to be careful that I don't do too much standing. My, my tendency is I'll always be upright, but to take time to sit down and rest um, and hopefully even have a chance to eat something. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> it's yes. been a little wild and crazy this last year. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's been a crazy year. But, you know, um, thank you for sharing. Get rest, get help is what I heard. And so we all need that rest. Um, I think I should be thinking about checking myself into one of these um, hotels, maybe one of these days, just having Margie time, order some room service and just chill out and watch some Netflix and sleep in. Um, you know, we, yes, mommy, uh, Dr. Mommy uh, is tuning in from Wisconsin and she says she's loving this. Um, Rosemont said, it's time for the surprise, Katie. Um, <laughs> oh, she, that, she that was the surprise. Again. Yes, that was the surprise that she is going to check herself into a hotel and, you know, give herself a treat. Yes, yes. Abba said, um, Abba, Abba Krenzel said, thank you so much, ladies, um, for such insightful conversation. Um, Akosia, Akosia Dakwa says she used to sneak out of the office to watch her daughter's soccer game when she was in high school and she did not miss one. She's a junior in college now and just told me how she appreciated it. Well, thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing, Akosia. Um, thank you, everybody. We really love the engagement here. And we're so sorry if we haven't highlighted your question or your comment. Um, thank you. Thank you. And this is the time that who are we bringing in next? I think we're bringing in Gia to talk about mental health. We just talked about physical health, which went a little bit into uh, mental health. And, you know, we are supposed to rest and also ask for help. And so let's get ready to bring Gia back into the house. Are we ready to bring Gia back? Let me see that in the comments. Let me see that in the comments. Let's Hi, Gia. Hi again, Margie. 
you know, I was watching you backstage and I saw you throwing those punches. <laughs> I, saw, I, I was like, oh, there she goes, mothering over there with her punches. <laughs> It was because you were talking about the stigma and I was like, yes, fight the stigma, fight the stigma. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to be fighting that stigma. So tell us, what do we do? How do we handle um, these mothering issues? Especially look at what happened this past year. There have been mothers who, with the numbers that we're hearing, so many women lost their jobs. They're the ones that took the brunt of it. Women were mothering not, not only their babies, but they were mothering their spouses. They were mothering extended family members. Teachers were mothering their students. I mean, how do we handle all this mentally, Gia? Yes, I think it's a lot. You know, a lot of times we put so much on the mothers and, and us as mothers, we take it all, right? We take it all because we feel like it's our duty to to provide, to support, to show that unconditional love. And a lot of times it is, but it's also we have to learn how to take care of ourselves, right? Like true love means loving yourself first so that you can provide that love to others. Um, it's it's challenging. It's challenging to be able to be there for someone when you are also struggling, whether it's in silence or you openly have someone that you can talk to about it. It's hard for many like different ethnic groups as a mother. It's difficult to complain. And I think I mentioned it earlier, you know, the fact that we do so much, we do get tired, we get exhausted at the end of the day you know, whether you work full time and go home and, and become a mother or whether you stay home and are working still full time because being at home is so 24 seven job. It's more exhausting. I feel um, we need support, right? We need that support system. We need to talk about our emotions, to, to complain at times, to vent. And I mentioned it earlier that it was hard for me to complain because I felt guilty or I felt like I was a bad mother for, for being tired, for complaining, because I felt like, oh, I'm not grateful that I have my children uh, and different ethnic groups. That's the same thing for mothers, you know, not being able to say, okay, I need time for myself. Sometimes it can be seen as selfish to take time for yourself, to take care of yourself, to practice self-care because you're supposed to devote yourself to your family. You're supposed to devote yourself to your children. So taking time for yourself can be seen as that being selfish, not being a good mother. It's important. Our physical health, just like we take care of our physical health, we have to take care of our mental health. And how do we do that? We can take proactive steps, you know, to, to make sure that we are okay overall, mentally and physically and spiritually uh, by taking walks, like Katie said, by engaging in things that we like, by building a support system, by seeking assistance when it's needed. You know, we all we, we are all resilient. We all have different levels of resiliency based on our experiences, based on how we've learned how to cope. You know, we all know how to cope. We've made it this far, right? The pandemic has impacted all of us. Um, but there's times when the way we cope may not be enough for the struggles that we have. And, and that's okay. You know, it's okay because there's professionals, there's mental health services available to provide that support, to provide that guidance, to teach people other ways of coping, of managing stress, of managing or processing trauma, whatever it is, you know, it's been a whole year or well, a little over a year now since, since, the pandemic started in this area. You know, I remember March 17th when schools closed, everything shut down. I mean, it was hard. It was hard on a lot of families, on students, on, on children, uh, monolingual mothers, you know, mothers that, that didn't understand what was going on because a lot of the information the schools were putting out were only in English. So feeling lost in the system, feeling afraid because you know, we've never gone through a pandemic, a global pandemic. And the fact that it was happening here in the U.S., but a lot of immigrant families have families in other countries and it was happening there, too. A lot of stress. So it's important for us to be able to identify when we are having a hard time so that we can better provide for our families. Right. If we are doing OK, if we are managing, if we are seeking assistance, then we show our family, our kids, that it's OK to ask for help, that it's OK to feel sad, to feel stressed out, but it's the way that we 
cope with how we're feeling and how we verbalize. I mean, a lot of times because of the mental health stigma, we don't talk about our feelings or we don't talk about when we are feeling angry or sad or frustrated. And those emotions are typical. We all go through, you know, we're not always happy, all, you know, all the time, 24 seven. We are humans. We have many, many emotions throughout the day. And sometimes society or we've been socialized to think that you can't be angry as a, as a woman that because you'll be called an angry woman, right? Or that you can't be frustrated with your kids because you're not a good mother, but you are, you know, every, we're human. We are going to have those feelings. We're going to be exhausted and it's okay for you to have those feelings. And it's okay for you to seek assistance, for you to talk to a friend, to vent, for you to take time for yourself and go to and check into a hotel or to a spa. And doesn't mean that you're neglecting your children. It means that you care about yourself because you want to provide for them, right? You want to show them that taking care of your mental health and your physical health is important. So they will know that they have to do the same thing. You're muted, Margie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I know I ran to there. Yeah. You, you, you heard, you heard taking care of ourselves is so important. Um, and you know, you, you, you've gotten a lot of love in the chat room. Yes. Um, it's, it's so important for us to remember that we are not, um, we're not robots. Um, there are people who are superheroes, but we're not superhuman. <laughs> Uh, we got to take that time. And everybody does have those down moments. Um, there's this saying that everybody's carrying a cross. That's why it's important for us to share our stories, because you might see someone and just assume that that person has it all together and you don't know what that person is going through. It doesn't even matter how wealthy a person is, how skinny that person may be, or how brilliant a person may be. We all have issues going on um, in our lives. And so that mental break, that speaking to someone is so important. Thank you, thank you. Rosamond said, it's a good reminder. Um, we appreciate all the input that we have gotten today. Um, and you know, we are at 1.31, um, an hour 31 minutes, and our show was supposed to be an hour 30, but we're going to beg you to stay an extra 15 minutes with us as we try to wrap up the program. And um, I think this is when we bring Caroline into the house. Um, so let's get ready to welcome Caroline back. Yes, um, viewers, as we want to give ourselves a treat, um, check out Willow and Poppy Studios. You might be able to buy yourself a present or buy a present for a loved ones. Um, you know, I wish I had that bracelet with me. Um, Louise Fagan of Willow and Poppy, she made this beautiful fragrant, um, sorry, bracelet um, that had Maya Angelou on there, a quote for me. And I was so appreciative of that. Looks like we've lost Caroline. Um, she will be back. Um, so maybe we should go to Abba. And um, Abba, are you ready for us? Um, I hope you are. Uh, hold tight uh, as we wait to bring Caroline in. Um, let's go on a commercial break um, and wait for Caroline. Yes, happy to have you back, Caroline. We lost you for a minute. So sorry. 
<laughs> no, no, that's okay. Now, um, we've talked about physical health, our mental health, um, the value of time in the second half. And now that we're back to you, we want to know how do you think that we can get people to support us? Um, I think a support circle of moms is so important. Um, mom guilt is real and you can feel it um, anytime. Um, if you're on social media, you feel it a lot. But you know what? Um, I've built a circle of group uh, of friends, um, of moms who are kind of in the same life stage as me with little kids and um, just to be able to send a quick text saying, hey, uh, Duke did this today. Is that crazy? Is that weird? Um, and then just to have them support me and say, uh, no, it's totally normal, um, is incredible. So um, I really value my friendships. Um, I think probably number one in my support circle is my mom. Um, my mom is my rock. I call her for almost everything. <laughs> um, uh, to what kind of groceries to get to what should I feed my kids? I don't know. Um, so just having a, su a strong support system and knowing that you're not alone in uh, mothering is essential. It's so important. Yes, mothering is essential. And Peter just said that anyone who did not get mothering love from childhood should forgive their mother and show them love because mothers are a gift. Um, thank you, Peter, for sharing that. Thank you. That is really, really sweet. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Caroline, yes, that support group is so important because there are times that you may not know what to do. I mean, Abba was talking about her adult child and I was, I was getting some nuggets from there because my child is not at that stage yet. Or, you know, you may be going through, even if you're going through infertility, to have that support group. Or um, if you're going through a tough time, um, there's domestic violence, there could be abuse in a marriage, whatever it is to have that support group and have that circle. And sometimes it's harder to find these support groups in real life um, because, you know, I was listening to a talk on NPR one time and it said the average American has one and a half friends. And I thought, oh, you don't have two friends. You have one and half of a person, like seriously. So, you know, that's when you can tap into other networks. Like there's some support groups, even on Facebook that you could join. I know that my cousin um, out in New York invited me to join a group called Boss Moms, where I was learning about what other moms who were bosses were doing. And I like to consider the fact that I am a boss. And so I was with the boss moms, you know? Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm just, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Um, but thank you so much um, for sharing those nuggets about finding that network. And you are blessed to have um, your family support you with your young ones. And I wish you all the best. Um, you know, this is when we bring Abba in. We're going to skip that commercial break. So Abba, if you need to fix your lipstick now, this is the time to get that done real fast so you can come in and talk to us about hope. Because we all know that us mamas, us guardians, aunties, teachers really do need hope. You ready for us, Abba? I am. I was born ready to talk about hope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, girl, shoot. <laughs> so, you know, I think I said this before. Um, in the course of your, your life as a mothering, throughout this mothering experience, you for sure, you'll drop the ball sometimes. You for sure, you'll make mistakes sometimes. And I think if that happens or when that happens, actually, you know what? Apologize, you know, um, to your children, I've apologized many times to the children, I, I, to my kids. I've, you know, sat them down, listened to them, heard their point of views, and I've resolved to do different. The important thing is no shame, no condemnation. Um, for me, also, my faith is really important to me. And when I don't know what to do, one thing I've always done is pray, Lord, you know what, this mistake, this thing I did, don't let it impact them, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, negatively. And that has always seen me through, has helped me. Um, hope for mothers. Now, the definition of hope itself is this. 
Uh, hope is much more than a wish or optimism. The definition of hope is that desire um, that your future will be better than your past and that you have a role to play with it. And so therefore, hope is the foundation of our lives as mothers in this mothering experience. Hope is what will make you rise up again without condemnation and try it again. Hope is what will make you apologize to yourself, to your kids sometimes when you've dropped the ball. Hope is what will make you try new things. You know, it, so you made a mistake. All right, rise up again, bond with your kids. You know, talk to them, find out about them. I'm a big believer in what they call the five love languages. You know, you can go online and do a quiz, find out your, your, your child's lo love language. You know, my daughter, Alyssa, her love language is um, words of affirmation. Uh, Archie, my son, his is, is acts of service. So Archie was my child when he'd come home from college and, you know, he'd be helping me clean the kitchen, do the dishes. And Lisa's like, dude, you're making me look bad, you know. But uh, and I think earlier on, it was said about when you're raising the kids. Yes, you will have, you know, some different tactics because they have different personalities. It's OK. Learn. Buy a book. Listen to a podcast. You know, join a community of other mothers and gain wisdom and strength and resilience from all of that. But do not give up and certainly do not give in to condemnation. I think one thing that helped me in my mothering journey as well was my relationship with my own mother, who's been gone now for 16 years. Now, my mother was an amazing mother. Um, the early part of my childhood, I felt she was too hard on me. I felt, you know, I, I was buckling under the weight of her, what I thought were her critical, you know, uh, eye and sky high expectations. And I remember at 15, just saying, God, you know what, take this woman away, take her to heaven, because I just can't deal with her anymore. But then something changed, something changed. And now with the eyes of wisdom, I look back and she regrouped, you know, she continued to work on herself. Um, and, you know, um, at the time she died, she was my best friend ever in life. And so knowing that gave me the hope, the desire, the strength to continue to evolve to continue to become as a person and as a mother see because the thing is that as as i'll tell you straight up for me um raising my children it wasn't that i knew it all in fact i was growing up too you're growing up you're learning about the world the world is changing you're figuring it out as you go along you're just a couple of steps you know in front of them at least that's what i i found it's okay you know the thing is you hold hands together with your children you can all go on this journey together to evolving, to becoming. Whatever you do, though, do not give in to condemnation or a sense of futility. Just regroup. Ask a couple of other, you know, women in your support group questions. Read a book. Listen to something inspiring. Take care of yourself. And then take life one day at a time because there is hope for the mom. Absolutely. Ooh. Okay, so if you've not subscribed to um, the Hope Manga podcast, maybe this is the time to go on every major podcast, Apple Podcast, Spotify, um, and go find Apa Kato under um, at the Hope Mongers uh, podcast because those were some nuggets. This is the time to regroup. And you know, look, look at Amapoku. Amapoku, where have you been hiding? I haven't seen you in forever. Well, she said, good advice. Um, look, we have a lot of love in here. Great perspective from Dr. Lugutera. Um, yes, Rosemont said, hope monger in the house. Yeah, she is selling us hope and books. Yeah. <laughs> and Lisa, Lisa said, let's all hold hands with our children and grow together. Um, yeah, but, you know, growing together, I kind of wish, like when my birthday is coming up, I kind of wish like I'm going to turn 25. So I don't know about the, like, I want to stay my age. They should come get, yeah. You know, it's, um, well, age is but a number, right? Age is but a number. Yes, yes, yes. Sheila um, says, do not give in to condemnation. Regroup. Thanks, lady. Um, Amma, I believe she wanted to say, Abba, sometimes, you know, when you're typing, these things get you. Now, this is our final leg, Abba. We want one word that you have for mothers this Mother's Day. One word. Um, all the panelists are going to be sharing one word with us. So what is your word that you're sharing today? So my word is undaunted. 
undaunted. And I want to even read the definition of it. Undaunted means not intimidated or discouraged by difficulty, danger, or disappointment. So that's my one word, undaunted. All right, mamas, y'all go and be undaunted. Um, you heard, you heard the definition. So that's Abba's word for you. And it's time to bring our other mamas into the house. And so you know what? We're going to show you a little commercial, just showing you what Margie TV is about. We do book reviews, product launches. Y'all just contact us. Go to MargieMarge.com. We'll be right there waiting for you. Thank you. So Yes, the mamas are back. It's good. It's good to see you all. Um, I think we're missing Gia. She's gonna turn her there camera. There she go. There she go. <laughs> well, so we have the one word that we would love for you to share with the audience. Abba just gave us her word, which was undaunted. Undaunted was Abba's word. And so we're going this time we're going backwards. So we're coming to you, Caroline. What is your word? My word is embrace. Um, embrace the stage that you're in. Yes, you all heard Caroline. I'm trying to get her word up. Her word is embrace. Embrace the stage that you're in. So embrace all your goodness. Embrace being fly. Embrace the fact that you may be disappointed and that you don't have everything that you ever dreamed for your life to be. But embrace. Thank you, Caroline. Now we're to you, Gia. I guess my word would be vulnerability. You know, allowing ourselves to be vulnerable even in front of our kids because that's the way we show them that it's not always okay. You know, that we also have feelings and that sometimes their words can also hurt our feelings. And, and we show them, you know, that how to be kind and use those kind words, even with their mamas, because <laughs> sometimes they feel they can just throw it all at us, right? And that we're like, no, it doesn't matter. She's not going to get hurt. Well, no, our feelings get hurt too. Uh, so I would say vulnerability. Wow, we've got some good words. We are going to be undaunted. We will embrace ourselves and we will be vulnerable. Um, we're in our natural state. So we're on to you, Katie. What is your word for mothers as Mother's Day comes up? So my word is community. It's um, to work to keep your connections or to reconnect if needed. Um, I have introverted tendencies and will be very happy sitting there reading a book, right? Yours looks lovely. <laughs> I've got multiple great authors here to consider. Um, but you still need that connection. You need, as Caroline said, a group of mamas or somebody, grandmas, moms, to be able to message and say, but the kid just did this. <laughs> what, is this okay? Is this normal? Um, and to just know that you're not alone, which again also goes back to mental health um, and feeling connected. Wow, that's great. So. Um, viewers, listeners, I'm going back to those words because I don't want us to forget. We have undaunted, we have embrace, vulnerability, and we have community. Now, our final word um, for mothers this coming uh, Mother's Day is going to be from Dr. Sabrina. But Dr. Sabrina, before you give us your word, um, I would love for you to also share about your books briefly um, so that viewers and listeners would know where to find your books. Okay, my books can be found at drsabrinabooks.com. And the book that I have specifically for mothers is He's Not a Statistic, 12 Laws for Single Mothers. Stop. My, my puppy is trying to take over. Uh, 12 Laws for Single Mothers Raising Black Males. And so uh, I've done, a, I guess, an okay job with raising my son. He graduated valedictorian of his class, went to school on a full ride. 
uh, athletic scholarship to a Division One school at only five seven, playing basketball. Started all five years. Got his undergrad in three and his master's on the same scholarship. So I think I did okay. I think I did okay. So and then I have several other books there. You can see them when you go there. So, but my word for mothers is care. And care is an acronym. The C is that you have to be coachable. Because how do you get better if can't nobody tell you nothing? You have to be able to embrace feedback gracefully. The A is you need to have an attitude of gratitude. Because what I've learned is if you are complaining, you can't be thankful. And if you're thankful, you can't complain. Choose to be thankful. The R is to be righteously responsible on your stuff. If you did it, say you did it. Because then nobody can throw you up under the bus because you can tell your story better than anybody. And then the E, I used to say embrace excellence, but I learned if you embrace it, you can let it go. So now I say embody excellence. And when you embody excellence, when you show up, your best shows up. You bring your A game to every game. All right, now. Bring your A game to every game. So we're going to be undaunted as we embrace. We will be vulnerable. We will call on our community and we will care because we are bringing our A game. Well, ladies, this is just amazing. Now, um, Abba, we're coming back to you because we know that you are a seller of hope. And so you probably have a poem that all mothers can listen to for this uh, coming Sunday and every day. And we would love to hear from you. Thank you very much. And I want to say that the poem, this poem I'm about to read, I wrote um, six years ago. My daughter was in middle school and in her Mother's Day card, she called me Alpha Mom. Um, and so the poem is in response to that, but I don't want to leave, leave my other baby out, Archie, my adult baby out. So I want to say that I talk about him as well in my book, Reflections of a Hope Monger. And I talk about how uh, I had a dream. I was in a dimly lit room and then a glow begin to be, began to, you know, started from the middle of the room. And I felt uh, like a, a light feather-like tap on my forearms. Um, and, and, and I knew something special had happened. And then some weeks later, I realized I was expecting Archie. So that's that baby. With Alyssa, I wrote in, in this essay, um, I, I write this, a major turning point in my life came when I found I was expecting a daughter. In that moment, I felt a strong resolve to become my best self so that I would be able to truly nurture, love, and guide my daughter. I talk about how Alyssa's entrance into the world was heralded by loud and indignant screaming as she voiced her immediate and intense um, displeasure at being, at being removed from the warm cocoon that had been her home for nine months. To this day, Alyssa still knows what she wants and she doesn't hesitate to voice it or to go after it. I knew I had to step up my game as a human being and as her mom, when she was three, I'd been working with her on simple three-letter words. Well, one day, someone asked Alyssa if she could read, and I said, no. And she replied, yes, I can. And then she picked up another book and began to read a whole paragraph. Since that day, I have continued to marvel at her intellect. Uh, she is compassionate and applies a spirit of excellence to every task she undertakes. Like her older brother, she makes us incredibly proud. And so this poem is called Alpha Mom. Alpha Mom, her card read, little does she know the tears, my fears, that I can't do it all. I don't know it all. Alpha Mom, her card read, she looks up to me. She depends on me. She believes in me. Alpha Mom, her card read, little does she know how often I'm just winging it sometimes faking it, praying and making it. My inspiration, she calls me. Little does she know that I am the one who basks in her glow. I hope she knows she beats in my chest. I hope she knows I gave her my best, even the times I was put to the test. Alpha mom, not me. Every day, new grace 
is what I crave to run this race. One day she will learn, the future will show, but for today I will be alpha mom. And so to all the alpha moms up there on this stage and listening to us, I wanna say happy Mother's Day. We're all amazing. We're all alpha moms. As long as we keep trying, as long as we keep doing, we've got this. Oh my goodness. I know we have exceeded our time, but you know, you guys are the absolute best. You are all great. And I appreciate you joining us, viewers, listeners. This is the season finale for Margie TV Humanity Chats. We have been at this um, since April of 2020 as a result of the pandemic. Um, you know, when my book tour got canceled, we started doing this and here we are. We've talked about all these subjects, all these topics. I've had so much support from this network. Um, you know, um, other than Katie, everybody on this stage tonight has been on the show. We have celebrated Hispanic Heritage Month with Gia. We've done the quarantine hustle with Caroline. We launched Reflections of a Hope Monger with Abba and Dr. Sabrina gave us those nuggets at the beginning of the year that we should live by. Now go back and watch that because there she has some acronyms as well on those on, on, on how we get to live our lives and how we can uh, make resolutions. Now Katie has not been on the show, but she's been a big advocate displaying my books on her social media. And so we are community right here. Find your community, find your tribe. These women have done it. I see that the chat room is popping. I'm unable to show all these comments and I'm just clicking on it. Thank you, Dr. Newman. Thank you, Dr. Vivian. Thank you, Nana Kosia, Sheila, Flora, um, everybody, all the claps. This has been amazing, guys. Thank you for joining us tonight. Go be loving. Go hug a mom. Um, of course, we're social distancing and observing COVID protocols, but you know, you can do a virtual hug, pick up a phone, call someone, check on them. Oh yes, Dr. Sabrina said, fist bump, elbow, all that good stuff. This has been Humanity Chats with Margie. We have enjoyed being with you. We will be back for season four on May 27th, 2021. We have a fabulous season lined up for you. But as always, we are open to suggestions. Send us an email if you would like to come on the show. If you're watching us tonight, this is what we say to you. If you're not subscribed to Humanity Chats yet, this is the time. Go on all the major podcasts and subscribe. If you're not subscribed to Margie TV, you are really missing out. Go subscribe because we've got some amazing stuff just this week. We had some programming that clocked over 15,000 views. Go check it out. I'm not going to say too much about it. And you know what? As always, shout out to the Margie TV team for the support. We would not have been able to do this without you. Um, February, March was so jam-packed. We had two guests per night, shows popping here, there, celebrating our excellence. Um, thank you so much. Now, for those who have provided us with gifts and sponsorship throughout um, the season, we would like to say a big, big thank you. Humanity Chats is a conversation about everyday issues that impact humans. It's for all of us because we are human. And as always, I say, together, we can go far. So from Abba, Katie, Caroline, Gia, and Dr. Sabrina, we say, Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's, Happy Mother's Day. Day.